internet. It's time once again for Gaming with Max on Puppet. That's me. For those of you who saw what I did post on Monday, you know that I was just totally wiped out after having been at a game convention last weekend. Uh, it was a, a really a great time, a local con called Kingdom Con. It's a small convention, but had probably about 500 people there this weekend. And it was four days of gaming awesomeness, let me tell you. They had everything from card games to board games to tabletop war games and role-playing games. They had demo games, pickup games, tournaments, just all kinds of great stuff. And uh, I was there having a good time. I, uh, I, I played in some games. Uh, I even ran a role-playing game that I'll be talking about later called Dungeon Danger Patrol. And uh, picked up a couple of things to add to my gaming collection uh, that I'm uh, going to be talking about here on uh, the show. Including this one right here called Boss Monster. And let's just uh, get right into it. So Boss Monster is a nifty little card game that was... Uh, that started life as a Kickstarter campaign and uh, has gained in popularity even since then. It's a, it's a great game. It's, as you can see from the artwork on the cover, it's based off of those old retro, or not even retro, it's uh, based off of those old, uh, like Nintendo style side scrolling dungeon games uh, where you, you know, you, you went along through a dungeon to get to the monster at the end, but everything was basically all one level. Only the twist on this one is that instead of being the hero going through the dungeon, you're the actual boss monster at the end of the dungeon. And your goal is to build your dungeon and make it so that you, the heroes will want to come to your dungeon. And then, of course, you want to kill the hero. The object of the game is to kill the hero and capture their souls. You want to get 10 hero souls before the heroes do five points of damage to you. If they manage to do five points of damage to you, you're out of the game. It's uh, playable for two to four players. I've played games uh, with both two players and four players, and both versions have been incredibly fun. Um, it doesn't really take a whole lot of time, about a half an hour each time, although the four player game we had did go on a little bit longer, about 45 minutes, but uh, it was still a lot of fun. And uh, let's just get right into how it works, okay? Okay, so here's how the game works. The game is played with a series of decks. Uh, as you can see here, we've got uh, an epic hero deck, a hero deck, a room deck, and a spell deck. The room decks and the spell decks are what you're going to use to build your uh, dungeon with. Well, mostly the room deck is what you're going to build this dungeon with. The spell deck are like special cards that you use. They can uh, help you build your uh, your sp um, duh. They can help you build your dungeon faster, or they can be used to uh, to slow down your uh, your enemy from building dungeons or uh, other special effects. They can kill heroes or stuff like that. Um, these are the, the hero decks you just saw earlier. You'll notice that there's heroes and epic heroes. The heroes are ordinary heroes. They're worth one soul each. That's this little gem here on the bottom. And the epic heroes are, are more powerful, uh, more badass heroes. They're worth two souls each. You get the epic hero deck by going through all the heroes in the ordinary hero deck first. The goal is to get 10 hero souls before you get 10 damage done. We'll show you what damage looks like right here on the hero cards. These are some hero cards. We have here a mage and a fighter. One of the things that's great about this game is not just the artwork, like I said earlier, but also there's these little uh, text blurbs on the bottom of each hero that gives a story behind each of them, and they're pretty funny. I like it a lot. So you can see here we have a mage and a fighter. There's uh, the little icon up in the top corner indicates that they're interested in mage treasure and fighter treasure. We'll get to that in just a second. And you see these little bub blood droplets down here in the corner. Those are the damage that they can do to you. If they manage to make it all the way through to your dungeon, they get to you, that's damage done to you. So you want five of these soul gems, or ten of these soul gems, before you get to five of these blood droplets. And then there's this boss deck. This is the deck that gives you the boss monster that you're going to be uh, in the game. So let's take a look at what a dungeon looks like. This here is a dungeon. You can see I've got my boss monster at the end. Uh, I went ahead for this example and picked out King Croak, which is the guy in the box that you saw earlier. Uh, and then this is the dungeon as it goes along. There's different types of rooms that you can build in your dungeon, traps room, trap rooms and monster rooms. Um, there's a special kind of room called advanced rooms, which we'll get to in just a second. But how you build your dungeon is 
Um, you put your you put your cards down uh, on your turn. You can build one room at a time per turn, and uh, you put the cards down going to the left, so from right to left, uh, as you put your rooms down. Uh, and then th there's this little number down here in the black heart. That's the amount of damage that the room does to the hero as it goes through. And your hero, the heroes have uh, little red hearts that have numbers in it. That's how many uh, dam how much damage they can take before they die. So ideally, you want your dungeon to do enough damage to kill the hero before he makes it all the way to the monster at the end, um, because that gives you the soul. If he doesn't, then the hero d does damage to you, and and then that's how that happens. So how the how this works is the hero goes. So let's take the mage. The mage goes through this dungeon. So he starts by entering this room here. Um, which does one damage to him. Then he moves on to this next room, which does one damage to him. Now this room actually has a special uh, ability, which means all adjacent monster rooms get plus one damage. So this is actually a monster room that would have done another plus one damage. So two plus the one from this room. So three, so he's down to three health. Then he moves down to the next room, which does two, but also it's a monster room. So he gets plus one from the uh, adjacent room next to him. So it's another three, so that would be enough to kill him. So the mage then goes over here, up, flipped over, so you can count the soul gem. So now let's say you got the fighter, and the fighter goes through your dungeon. And he makes it all the way through all the rooms in your dungeon uh, without taking enough damage to kill him. So now he's at the end where the boss monster is. And, uh, and he, you, he doesn't die. So he also goes over here into your score area, but instead of being flipped over to be a soul gem, you keep him upright, and you count this blood droplet as damage against you. And that's why you want to get 10 soul gems before five blood droplets to win. If you get five, five blood droplets, then you're out of the game. Now, I said earlier, there were also advanced rooms. This right here is an advanced monster room, the Vampire Bordello. The rooms themselves are also pretty funny like the heroes are. It's a lot of jokes in this game. It's pretty great. So an advanced room works like this. It, normally, when you build your, your dungeon, once you have five rooms out, that's the maximum room size, like right here, five rooms, you put a new card, um, you just flip out a card, and you get an ordinary room, like this one here, uh, and you can place it on top of any other ordinary room, and it doesn't matter where you put it, as long as you just want to, you just put it down anywhere. So, like, I just put this one right here, right? And a, an advanced room usually has some kind of special feature about it, but they can only be placed on rooms that match the treasure type. That's this symbol down here in the corner. Remember earlier we looked at the heroes. The heroes have a treasure symbol up on the top that's, that uh, means that, like this fighter wants fighter treasures. So this is like this is the cleric treasure symbol. So the advanced room can only this advanced room can only go on a room that has a cleric treasure symbol on it, which would be in this dungeon, there's only the one room, that's this one. So I could only put it right there. Uh, and that's a pretty basic overview of the game. It's, of course, there's more to it than that. Um, but you can play the game. It's playable between two to four players. Uh, and um, you keep going until one person has ten um, soul gems. Um, and eventually, if you're, the more people you play with, the more likely you are to go through the hero deck and move on to the epic hero deck. Um, and uh, the more people playing the game, of course, the, also the faster it goes along because you pull out a number of heroes each round based on the number of people that are playing. But it's still pretty fun when you're playing with two people. And that's pretty much the whole game. And that's really all there is to it. It's a great game. Uh, it's about $25. You can pick it up at uh, most local game stores uh, and online. I highly recommend you go run out and get it right now and go play it with some of your friends. Until next time, keep playing games. Bye!